The neighbor girl who promised to take the university entrance exam with me fell in love with a spoiled rich kid. I advised her to stick to her dreams, but she called me a simp. They kissed in the rain, sped through the night, and were eventually expelled from school. After graduating high school, I got into my dream university, while the rich kid was sent abroad to study, but she regretted it later, pregnant, and asked if I was still willing to love her. Chapter 1. Joaquin. Veronica got caught skipping class again. She's getting scolded in the office. This is the third time this week, isn't it? A classmate passing by the classroom window gossiped with a smile. My hand, busy solving math problems, didn't stop, nor did I look up. If she did it, she has to face the consequences. The classmate scoffed, probably finding my response uninteresting. Back in the day, you and Veronica dominated the top two spots in the rankings. Childhood sweethearts, both academic stars, a textbook couple. Look at you now. Times sure have changed. I ignored his wistful and exaggerated tone and finished writing the final result when someone knocked on my desk. Looking up, I saw a girl frown slightly. The math teacher wants to see you in the office. It must be about the recent competition results. I nodded, closed my pen cap, and before leaving, glanced at the boy leaning on the windowsill. Veronica and I were never together. Yeah, yeah, sure. Everyone knows she's Lou's girlfriend now. She's got it made. Living off her looks. The rest of us still have to struggle with studying. If only I were a woman. His voice faded as I walked away, pushing open the office door. The first thing I saw was Veronica standing in front of the homeroom teacher's desk, getting a scolding. Her once shoulder-length hair had grown out, styled in fashionable curls, and her ears, which had no piercings before, now sported shiny diamond studs. I heard they were a gift from Diego. Veronica didn't have pierced ears. She got them just for those earrings. She frowned slightly, showing no hint of remorse in her eyes. Seeing me, the homeroom teacher's stern face lit up with a smile. Joaquin, here to see the math teacher. Maybe she heard my name because Veronica turned her head. It had been a long time since I last saw her. Her face, which used to be plain, was now artfully made up, covering up any trace of her former self. I snapped out of it and nodded at the homeroom teacher. Yes, the middle-aged woman smiled, the wrinkles at the corners of her eyes filled with joy. You won first place again in the math competition. The math teacher couldn't be happier. Relief washed over me as I finally relaxed. First place, although I had been confident. Hearing the official results still filled me with uncontrollable joy. Great. Now I'm one step closer to my dream school. As I walked past Veronica, I caught a whiff of the sweet, overpowering scent of her perfume. I couldn't help but sneeze. Her flower-like face paled slightly. Come here, Joaquin. The award certificate for the competition is ready. Take it home and make your parents proud. The math teacher closed his water bottle and pulled the certificate from the drawer, handing it to me. He couldn't stop smiling as the other teachers in the office praised me but my mind drifted back to Veronica. Veronica, look at Joaquin, and then look at yourself. You used to be neck and neck in school, just one point apart. For two years, you both pushed each other to excel. What have you become now? High school is the most important time of your life. I don't want you to have regrets. Diego's family is one thing, but you, what do you have? He has a safety net. Do you? Why that look? Do you remember the dreams you had when you first came to school? You, the homeroom teacher's words were cut short because Diego, the one with the safety net, was now leaning lazily against the office door. Teacher, are you done? I'm here to take Veronica to lunch. I turned around just in time to see Veronica smiling as she held his hand. Veronica will regret this. Even the math teacher couldn't help but sigh. Will she? Veronica told me she never would. Chapter 2. Veronica and I had known each other since childhood, born almost at the same time in the same hospital and living next door to each other, practically inseparable. As we grew older, Competing in academics became our routine, pushing each other to greater heights, always ranking among the top students, who ranked first or second depended on how well we performed in each exam. At 16, both Veronica and I were admitted to this prestigious city high school. At the beginning of our first year, she stood by my side, the wind blowing through the strands of hair at the nape of her neck, revealing patches of fair skin. She smiled, turning to look at me, Joaquin. I heard that students from this school get into a city university every year, three years from now will be among them. Right. I smiled back, the clarity and innocence in her eyes filled with ambition and a bright vision of the future. Of course. I thought we would continue, as always, pushing each other towards our shared dream. But everything changed when Diego transferred to our class at the start of our third year. Who was Diego? He was rich, good-looking, and had the kind of charm that made him the center of attention. As soon as he arrived, he caught the eye of many girls, but it was Veronica he set his sights on. I overheard him bragging to his friends. He said those girls who threw themselves at him were boring. The real fun was in someone like Veronica, the good girl. Don't you think it's thrilling to slowly break down a good girl? 
Diego said this while leaning against his motorcycle, smoking a cigarette, and his friends laughed in agreement, praising his brilliant insight, to be honest. At first, I didn't take Diego's words seriously. Call me arrogant or naive, but I never thought Veronica would be attracted to someone who had nothing going for him except money and looks. But I soon realized how wrong I was. The first time I saw Diego sit casually in front of Veronica's desk, leaning on his hand and lazily flipping through her papers, I instinctively stepped in to defend her. Diego, this isn't right. Diego looked up at me, his gaze filled with open disdain. What? Is the class representative supposed to handle this too? I opened my mouth to argue, but Veronica tugged at the corner of my shirt. It's fine, Joaquin. Maybe he just needs something from me. When I looked at Veronica, I didn't miss the flush spreading to her ears. After that, everything unfolded as if following the script of some cliched high school romance novel. The free-spirited and passionate Diego held an irresistible allure for the rule following Veronica, who had been so disciplined all her life. I watched as Veronica fell into Diego's trap, every attempt to intervene only becoming a joke to them. Things reached their peak on Diego's birthday. It happened to coincide with the midterm exams during our first semester of senior year. That day, as we walked to school, I noticed how distracted Veronica seemed. But lately, she had been talking to me less and less because of Diego. And despite my concern, I couldn't find the words to ask her what was wrong. It wasn't until after I left the exam room that I heard from my classmates, Veronica had missed the exam. She had left halfway through the first exam. I didn't know where she went. But that night, I saw Diego's social media post. The Veronica who had skipped the exam had gone to celebrate his birthday. In the pictures, they were standing on the highest building in the city, kissing, with the stars twinkling in the sky behind them. It looked romantic. But the cost was that the Veronica who had always been at the top of the rankings had fallen to the bottom. Chapter 3 That New Year's Eve I heard constant arguments coming from Uncle Bai's house next door. I sat at the dinner table, restless. My mother noticed my distraction and suggested I take some New Year's gifts to Uncle Bai's family. I gave her a grateful smile, picked up the gift box, and headed out the door. The front door to Uncle Bai's house was slightly ajar. And as I stood at the entrance, I heard Veronica's hysterical screams. Study. Study. Is that all you care about? Have you ever cared about me? Have you ever loved me? Ever since mom died, have you taken care of me for even a day? In your eyes, I'm nothing but a worthless loser unless I'm studying. Diego is different. At least he loves me. The door swung open from the inside, and I was caught off guard by Veronica's tear-streaked face. We both froze, but Veronica quickly composed herself, pushed past me, and stormed down the stairs. The living room was a mess, and Uncle Bai sat slumped on the couch looking much older than I remembered. Without hesitating any further, I put down the gift box and ran after Veronica, but I was too late. By the time I got downstairs, Veronica was already in Diego's car. I only caught a glimpse of her in the passenger seat, her arms wrapped around Diego's neck as they kissed. It felt like I'd fallen into an icy pit. I wanted to tell her it wasn't true. Veronica, it's not that no one loves you. Uncle Bai loves you very much, but a father's love is sometimes hidden too deeply, and maybe it's hard for a teenage girl to feel it. But that love was real, undeniable. As Diego's car slowly drove away, I made a decision in my heart. I wanted to pull her back, whether I succeeded or not. At the very least, I couldn't watch Veronica drift further away. So that's what I did. Even though I didn't see Veronica much during the winter break, I kept sending her messages, trying to show her that besides Diego, there were others in the world who cared about her. But Veronica never replied. It wasn't until the first day of the last semester of senior year that I saw something that shocked me. On the school bulletin board were screenshots of all the messages I had sent to Veronica. She stood next to Diego, his arm around her waist, watching coldly as our classmates whispered and pointed at me. Even though the weather was starting to warm up, I felt a chill down to my bones. Joaquin, I know Veronica is pretty, but did you really have to throw yourself at her? Hasn't anyone told you not to chase after someone else's girlfriend? Diego's voice was full of mocking sarcasm, but I didn't care about what he said. I only looked at Veronica. In just one winter break, she had changed so much. Her face was sharper, and her glasses were gone. The light in her eyes that once shone when she looked at me was nowhere to be found. Veronica, do you feel the same way? She didn't answer my question, just leaned against Diego's arm. Veronica, you don't need to get love this way. Is the love Diego gives you really what you want, even without him? Uncle Bai, my parents, and I all love you. We all want you to be happy. You, I'm still here, you know. Did you think I was dead? Before I could finish. Diego shoved Veronica aside and grabbed my collar. He looked furious, as if he was about to punch me in the face, but I just stared back at him calmly and softly asked, Diego, can you honestly say you really love Veronica? If you truly loved her, you'd want her to have a better future, not drag her down with you. 
Diego listened to my words as if he'd heard the most ridiculous thing ever. He let go of me and turned away. Veronica, am I dragging you down? No. Veronica's voice came from behind him. Cold and unfeeling. Chapter 4. Joaquin. I like him. I want to be with him. What does that have to do with you? I like my life now. I like the fact that every day is different. Do you really think living like you, like some old man during your prime years, is the only way to live without regrets? You've made your life so boring. Fine. But why drag me down with you? I couldn't believe what I was hearing from Veronica. Her voice was so calm. As if this had been her true feelings all along. So, this is what she had always thought of me. And what about your dreams? Are you giving those up too? I don't even remember how I managed to ask that question. But I heard my own voice echoing from far away. Veronica stepped forward, took Diego's hand, and looked at him with an infatuated gaze. As long as I have him, that's enough. As the crowd dispersed, I stood there, watching Veronica's retreating figure. For a long time, I stood frozen. And then, I turned and walked down a completely different path. After that day, I never asked about Veronica again. I never looked at her grades again. If this was what Veronica wanted, then she should go for it with everything she had. Hey Joaquin, I heard Veronica and Diego are breaking up again. My deskmate nudged me with his elbow. In the silent classroom, where the only sound was pen scratching against paper, his voice stood out. It was now the second half of our senior year, and every student was giving it their all, hoping for higher scores on the college entrance exam. In such a monotonous and high-pressure environment, people needed an outlet for their stress, and Veronica and Diego had become the perfect way to release that pressure. After all, what gossip is better than news about people right in front of you? I glanced up briefly, spotting our homeroom teacher watching us from the podium. If you don't want to get called out after class, I'd suggest you keep your mouth shut. My deskmate flinched and buried his head back into his papers. Veronica and Diego breaking up was nothing new. A wealthy playboy like Diego never lacked women. And Veronica was the type who couldn't tolerate infidelity, fights, insecurities, breakups, and reconciliations were inevitable. I had intended to let the words pass through one ear and out the other. But to my surprise, Veronica, who hadn't been to school in a while, showed up that day. She wasn't wearing her uniform and it didn't look like she was here to study. She stormed past her classroom and headed straight for the one next door. My classmates, sensing the drama, followed her, and I was dragged along by my deskmate to watch. As we reached the back door of the neighboring classroom, we heard a girl scream, You be asterisk TCH, how dare you flirt with my boyfriend? Inside, Veronica had grabbed another girl by the hair and dragged her out of her chair. My deskmate gasped, Whoa, she's acting like a delinquent now. I chuckled. Looking at the exaggerated earrings dangling from Veronica's ears. Such a wild and reckless youth. Chapter 5. The girl whose hair Veronica was pulling struggled. Revealing her face. She was the school's beauty queen. Back when Diego had first transferred. She had indeed pursued him for a while. But Diego wasn't interested. How could a girl used to being chased tolerate such a blow? Not long after. She gave up. But judging by the scene now. Had she and Diego reconnected in secret? Veronica. Are you crazy? Let go of me. The beauty queen screamed loudly, kicking her legs frantically on the ground. But Veronica, in her rage, was in no mood to listen. She even raised her hand, ready to slap the beauty queen across the face. Veronica, stop it. Diego's angry shout came from behind. Our classmates, ever perceptive, quickly made way for him. I, too, was dragged by my deskmate into the crowd and watched as Diego marched toward Veronica, pulling her away from the beauty queen. Veronica's eyes widened in shock as she stared at him. Tears shimmering in her eyes. Diego, you're yelling at me for her. Veronica, haven't you had enough? Is there anyone else but you by my side? Come on, don't embarrass yourself here. Let's go, I'll buy you that bag you wanted. Okay. Diego spoke gently, wiping the tears from Veronica's face, but she shoved his hand away. Without a word, Veronica ran outside, and Diego chased after her. The crowd quickly moved to the railings to witness what happened next. Through the endless curtain of rain, we saw Veronica running ahead. Diego chasing her, and then, the two of them embracing tightly in the downpour. Veronica pushed him, but he refused to let go, and then he cupped her face and kissed her. The crowd erupted in gasps of astonishment. The commotion continued until our homeroom teacher arrived, and the principal led the two rain-soaked lovebirds away. I returned to my seat, and my deskmate asked what I thought of the scene. I looked at the unfinished questions on my exam paper, recalling what I had just seen. Two fools in love. They're crazy. Men. You really are the class genius. That's spot on. The price of giving our classmates such a dramatic show was that both Diego and Veronica were called to meet with their parents. Diego got off easy. A phone call from his dad. And the whole thing was brushed under the rug. But for Veronica. Uncle Bai had no choice but to come in person. 
I didn't know what was said in the principal's office, but as I was walking down the hallway to turn in my homework, I ran into Uncle Bai, the man who had always been so full of energy, only briefly dejected years ago when Aunt Bai passed away, now looked as if he had aged 10 years. His back was hunched. When he saw me, he seemed a bit flustered and gave me a shy smile. Joaquin, it's been a while. Uncle Bai, he smiled again when he saw the paper in my hand. Another perfect score. I see. You've always been a great student. Never giving your parents any trouble. Veronica's dedication to her studies all these years is thanks to your help. Uncle Bai, you don't have to say that. Veronica is naturally smart. Yes, she is. She takes after her mother. But what happened to her now? Uncle Bai's voice trailed off, and his cloudy eyes filled with tears. I didn't know how to comfort him. I just stood there awkwardly, waiting for him to regain his composure. Fortunately, Uncle Bai didn't keep me waiting long. He patted my shoulder and spoke softly. Do well on your college entrance exams. Go to Beijing. Make your parents proud. I snapped out of my daze, watching him walk away, and found it hard to connect this frail figure with the strongman who used to pick up Veronica and me from our extracurricular classes. Of all the people affected by Veronica's transformation, Uncle Bai suffered the most. Chapter 6 Maybe it was because the romantic drama they staged that day went too far, but Veronica and Diego actually started coming back to school. However, calling it attending classes didn't mean they were paying any attention to their studies. Our homeroom teacher, being extra considerate, moved their seats to the very back of the classroom. Once the teacher's favorite, Veronica had now become the type of student she used to despise. Joaquin, aren't you bored from studying all the time? Why don't you come race with us after school? Diego's voice sounded beside me, but I didn't bother looking up. Not interested. Find someone else. But instead of leaving after my refusal, he reached over and snatched the pen from my fingers. Finally, I had no choice but to look at him. The privileged boy's face was full of arrogance. Diego glanced at my exam paper and smirked with disdain. What's the point of being good at school? You'll still end up working for my family's company. Joaquin, even if I'm a waste of space, I'm the kind of waste you'll never be able to reach. They all call you a genius, a top student. But so what? In the end, I'm still better than you. I sat there listening to Diego's arrogant speech not responding until he noticed my gaze and frowned. What's that look for? Nothing. I just think you're pitiful. What did you say? Diego reached out to grab my collar as he always did, but I shifted slightly, causing him to grab nothing but air. Isn't it pitiful? Everything you have is because someone else gave it to you. If it weren't for your dad, no one would care about you, and yet you're so smug, looking down on people who work hard to achieve success. Ask your dad, if he were running the company all by himself, would it still be as successful as it is now? Would he dare say yes? He wouldn't. Because unlike you, he's not an idiot. I watched Diego's face twist in rage, then stood up and calmly took back the pen from his hand. Diego, I can say with confidence that no matter where I go, I'll find a way to succeed. Can you say the same? For someone like you, calling you a waste would be a compliment. Who the hell do you think you are? Joaquin. Diego's fist came flying at me, and gasps erupted from our classmates. But before his fist could make contact with my face, I caught it in my hand. It couldn't move an inch further. His face flushed red, but he couldn't pull his hand back. See, I told you. Calling you a waste was giving you too much credit. I let go, and Diego stumbled back a few steps, caught just in time by Veronica, who had rushed over to support him. It seemed like he found something to retort with, sneering. So what? Veronica still likes me. I sat back down, flipping through the textbook in front of me. She can love whoever she wants. It's none of my business. Don't act like you don't care. Everyone knows you used to like Veronica. I never liked her. I looked up, meeting Veronica's eyes, and spoke clearly, one word at a time. Not ever. Chapter 7. I didn't think my words would have any particular effect on Veronica, but I lied. I did have feelings for Veronica, at the very least. I started learning Taekwondo because of her. In elementary school, on our way home from school, Veronica and I encountered a child trafficker. She was nearly kidnapped. If it hadn't been for an adult passing by and rescuing us, I can't imagine what would have happened. From that day on, I asked my parents to sign me up for taekwondo classes, because I wanted to protect her, but I never asked Veronica if she even needed my protection. Looking back now, she probably didn't. That evening, as I arrived home, I saw Veronica waiting at my doorstep. She had red lipstick on and wore a black spaghetti strap dress that was far too mature for her age. She just stood there, looking at me. Do you need something? Veronica seemed hesitant, and the motion sensor light turned off, leaving us in darkness. In the quiet, I heard her voice. Joaquin, did you really never like me? I stood on the steps, wondering if I should spend the weekend at the study hall. No, that's impossible. Veronica's voice suddenly rose, and when the light came back on, I saw the surprise in her eyes. 
Why was she so surprised? I stepped past her, took my keys out of my pocket, and prepared to enter the house, my tone indifferent. Does it matter? Would knowing I liked you make you feel any better? That's not what I mean. I just, before Veronica could finish her sentence, the sound of a car horn came from downstairs. Diego's waiting for you, isn't he? You should go. Don't bother me while I study. She stamped her foot in frustration, clearly annoyed. Joaquin, why are you always so boring? Study, study, is that all you know? What else can you do besides study? We only get to be 18 once. Don't you want to see how bright your 18 can be? The door clicked open. I turned to look at her, confused. Veronica, I think I'm doing just fine. The world in books is no less brilliant than yours. Why do you all think I'm repressing myself? That I'm compromising? Why don't any of you ever consider that this is my choice? It's my choice to live this way. The car horn downstairs grew more insistent, and Veronica finally turned and left. I couldn't help asking, have you thought about it? What will you do if you can't get into college? I have Diego. Her figure grew smaller and smaller, fading into the darkness, but Veronica was wrong. The only thing we can truly rely on is ourselves. Chapter 8, June, the heat of summer, and the time when all senior students fight their final battle. On the day of the college entrance exam, I gathered all my supplies and opened the front door, just like any other day. Mom, Dad, I'm heading out. Take care on the road. I came to my senses and saw my father standing behind me, and my mother holding a fried dough stick, smiling warmly. Good luck, son. I nodded firmly and glanced at the closed door across the street. I had imagined countless times what I would feel like on the day of the college entrance exam, excitement, anxiety, but no matter what I thought, I always pictured Veronica by my side, but in reality, the people you think will always be there for you have long since left, and there was no excitement or nervousness. When I saw the exam paper, all I felt was calm, like the still waters of a lake, I had lived up to my youth, and I had lived up to myself. The end of the college entrance exam meant the graduation banquet. The same classmates who used to curse and say they couldn't wait to graduate were now hugging each other, crying. Veronica and Diego, of course, didn't attend. I sat at the table, eating my meal, when our homeroom teacher walked over with two glasses of red wine and handed me one without asking. We've all graduated now. A little drink won't hurt. She had already drunk with many of the students tonight, her face slightly flushed, and she was chattier than usual. I still remember when you and Veronica first walked in together on the first day of freshman year. The principal told me that you two were the stars of this class. I thought, wow, a boy and a girl, the main characters of a novel have come to my classroom. I was worried that you two would develop some inappropriate feelings during high school. But who would have thought you'd both focus solely on your studies? You pushed each other so hard that you left third place far behind. Sometimes I wondered if the two of you had studied yourselves into a stupor. I thought you'd both keep walking down that path together. Who could have guessed that Veronica would stray so far? Joaquin, I know you don't talk about it, but I know it hurts. You and Veronica grew up together. Watching her go down a different path must be harder for you than anyone else. But I want you to remember, in this world, everyone has the right to choose their own path. You can feel regret for her, but you can't resent her. Understand. I knew this was the last lesson my teacher wanted to impart to me. I stared at the deep red wine in my glass and drank it in one gulp. I understand. Thank you teacher. She patted my shoulder and stood up. You're smart. I'm not worried about you. The wine was bitter. Chapter 9. The long-awaited summer break turned out to be no different from the past ones. I got my driver's license, did some volunteer work, and went on a trip with friends. But the one who should have been living her best life, Veronica, remained silent on social media. When the exam results were released, as expected, I couldn't find my score. It wasn't until the admissions office in Beijing called my parents that they finally believed it, their son had been accepted into the best university in the country. In that moment, seeing the smiles and tears on their faces, I realized that every late night of studying, every cup of coffee, had been worth it. I was the top science student of the year, the principal hung banners around the school to celebrate, and waves of reporters rushed to interview me. Standing at the school gate, surrounded by the crowd, I couldn't help but notice a few pairs of bright, clear eyes in the sea of people. They reminded me of the old Veronica. A reporter asked if I had anything I wanted to say. I hesitated for a moment, tugging at my sleeve. I want to say that we only get one youth, but don't think that reckless abandon is the only way to experience it. Every piece of knowledge you gain from books, every character you write down, that's your youth. Youth is within you, not in some novel. Live in the moment, don't betray yourself, and don't betray all the nights you spent studying. That's youth. In that moment, my vision blurred, and in my mind's eye, I saw the hunched figure sitting at a desk, surrounded by towering stacks of books and papers. That was me. 16-year-old Joaquin, I've done it. I've fulfilled your wish. After returning home from school, my mother told me that Veronica had failed her college entrance exams. Apparently, 
She fainted during the last test and was rushed to the hospital. Her score would only get her into a vocational college. I was stunned, feeling a bit dazed. Vocational college? I had never associated that term with Veronica. Instinctively, I reached for my phone, wanting to send her a message, but when the moment came, I didn't know what to say. Diego hadn't even taken the exam. His father had already arranged for him to attend a university abroad. So, what about Veronica? That night, I was jolted awake by loud arguing from Veronica's house next door. I turned on the light and headed outside, only to find my parents already in the hallway. The door to Veronica's house was open, and Uncle Bai stood barefoot in the living room. Veronica was nowhere to be seen. My father walked over and patted Uncle Bai's back. Old friend, what's going on so late at night? Uncle Bai let out a bitter laugh. Shaking his head, that boy wants to break up with Veronica, and she ran off in a rage. At this late hour, it wasn't safe for Veronica to be out alone. After telling my parents, I grabbed my phone and went out to look for her. I found Veronica and Diego outside a bar not far from the neighborhood. Diego had his arm around another girl. I've made myself clear, let go. I'm done with you. Okay, take the money and get lost. Diego shouted, pulling a card from his pocket and throwing it in Veronica's face. She fell to the ground. Watching as his sports car sped away, I walked over, intending to help her up, but she shoved me away. You're here to laugh at me too, aren't you, Joaquin? I don't need your fake kindness. I didn't do anything wrong, at least I loved passionately, I'll never regret it. As I watched Veronica's trembling figure disappear into the night, I wasn't sure if she was saying those words to me or to herself. Chapter 10 In September, I boarded a plane to Beijing. Before the flight, I received a call from Veronica. Someone I hadn't spoken to in a long time. Her voice was hoarse, carrying a note of desperation. Joaquin, I'm pregnant. Her fainting during the exam now made sense. I didn't stop walking as I gazed out at the clear blue sky. My tone calm. Veronica, you had your carefree youth, and I have my future to reach. We were never on the same path. After saying that, I immediately hung up the phone and blocked her number. Life at the university in Beijing was fulfilling. I didn't choose Tsinghua. Instead, I enrolled at Peking University. Time spent with classmates in the library, conversations with professors, and occasional moments of relaxation made life feel beautiful. Throughout the four years of college, I lived a remarkably fulfilling life. Wanting more of it, I decided to continue my studies. During my second year of graduate school, I heard that the Liu family had gone bankrupt. Diego was never cut out for business. After returning from his overseas studies, he made a mess of the company, even firing several key engineers. In the end, he was undone by the very workers he had always looked down upon. Later, after completing my master's degree, I returned to my hometown to start my own business. Uncle Bai's family had already moved away. My mother told me that Veronica didn't choose to have an abortion but gave birth to the child. She kept holding onto the hope that she and Diego could start over, clinging to that dream as she remained behind. Uncle Bai had heard enough of the gossip and eventually sold the house, moving to the countryside on his own. Another summer arrived and my business was starting to thrive. The company was expanding, and we needed to hire more people. And there, on the list of interviewees, I saw a name I recognized, Diego. When Diego saw me, his face darkened, but at his assistant's reminder, he stood up and addressed me, Mr. Lin. I smiled and nodded, gesturing for him to sit down. The interview lasted barely two minutes before I realized Diego had nothing substantial to offer. He was entirely unqualified. Predictably, he didn't make the cut. As I watched him leave, my assistant whispered to me, gossiping. I heard he used to be the young master of the Lu family. After the bankruptcy, he's had a tough time, with a kid and an uneducated wife to support. Life sure is unpredictable. So, Veronica did get what she wanted. After all, I sipped my tea and continued reviewing the resumes in front of me. Yes, life is full of surprises. These two, let's keep them, boss. But these two are fresh graduates. They don't have much experience. If we don't hire them and no one else does, how will they ever get experience? People need someone to hold an umbrella for them every now and then.